an image of, 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 of the Antichrist. Here's, here's the shepherd that has idols that are used to worship him. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. Watch. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. This guy, who is the Antichrist in this text, is assaulted by somebody with a sword. And it puts out his eye and dries up his arm. When I was a kid, we had a song. In fact, I have a little, little, little clunker thing that somebody gave me at home. It's called the One-Eyed, One-Armed, Flying Purple People Eater. You, ever, you, ever, you remember that? Some of you, you, know, you date yourself, but you old guys remember that. And one-eyed, one-armed, flying purple people eater. You know, and uh, you say, where'd they get that? Well, before we're through this morning, you're going to wonder where they got a lot of things. But uh, that's what this guy is. And what happens with, with this fellow is, is and, and I'll, I'll just tell you the scenario just quickly, in the midst of the week, and that's an important term, if you say in the midst of something, you're talking about the middle part. If you say the middle, well, that's a particular point. The seventh week of Daniel is divided into two sections, 1,240, uh, 1260 days, 1,260 days, 42 months, three and a half years either side. When you say 1,260 days, there is a 1,260th day and a 1,261st day. That is the middle. But when you say the midst, you're talking somewhere around that, but you're not dating it on exactly that day. That's why you'll find, for example, in, in Daniel 13, uh, chapter 12, there's a, a period of time called 1290 days. Well, that's 30 days longer than the 1260. The 1290 days end at the, at the same point where the 1260 days end with the advent. Okay? I don't know that tune. That's not the flying purple people either. <laughs> I've hunted that for my phone, but I can't find it. Um, so if you've, got a, if you've got 1,260 days in here and 1,290 days in here, what does that tell you? Well, if you back up, the 1,260 days begin here, they end there. But the 1,290 days ends here. It would begin 30 days before the 1,260 days. So there's a period of time, about a month in duration, prior to the middle point of the 70th week. You remember we were going over those things last night in Revelation 12 about Satan being cast out of heaven and so forth? After he's cast out of heaven, he comes down, and then after he's cast out and established in the earth, then he's got 1,260 days left. So the casting out takes place before the 1260 days. We say in the middle of the week, we mean in the midst of the week. Not exactly that 1260th day. He doesn't drop down on that day. He's come down prior to that because he gets established in the earth and then has the 1260 days. All that's taken place in that 30-day period that's identified as a 1290 the extra 30 days in it. So in that 30-day period, some things are going to happen. Satan's going to come out of heaven, be cast out of heaven, and his angels with him. They're going to come down to planet Earth. This man of sin is going to have taken over. He's going to have it put in his mind to go sit in the temple declaring himself to be God. Now look, if you had somebody go into the Jewish temple and declare themselves to be God, do you think anybody would not believe him? Well, I would imagine somebody would want to try him out. If you say you're God, what would be the easiest way to find out if he really is? Go whack him. And somebody comes in there with a sword. I mean, you got all these metal detectors. You, you can't even, I don't even have my pocket knife in my pocket right now because I was on the airplane two days ago and I hadn't put the junk back in my pocket. My daddy always told me, he said, a man carries a knife. So I always carried a pocket knife. A little, little bitty job. I've had it 30 years. You can't take it on the airplane anymore, you know, that kind of thing. But, uh, you, you know, <clears throat> you, you can get guns and that kind of stuff through the security. You can't get the pocket knife. <laughs> uh, well, you can, too, because I get it through o at O'Hare all the time. I get caught in Detroit. Uh, I, I've actually taken it to Detroit with me probably a half a dozen times. Get through O'Hare, get to Detroit, and they find it. 
that doesn't make you feel good about going through a busy airport, does it? <laughs> but anyway, you got to take your shoes off, so, you know, for whatever. There'll never be another shoe bomber. <laughs> I already did that, you know, so, but we're still taking our shoes off. This guy, my, I'll just give you a scenario, somebody wax him. They lay him out, CNN, Fox News, everybody's crying about this guy who had brought world peace, whose peace policy, all that stuff we read about while ago that Brian was going over, he, this, this guy's the world's hero. And now he's dead. And then all of a sudden, whammo, he gets up. Now, do you think he'd have any trouble making the whole world believe he's God? Do you think there's any religion on the face of the planet that wouldn't say, he's our guy? Now, the question is, how did he do that? Well, come with me to Revelation chapter number 11. And notice some strange things that are said about this guy. Revelation chapter number 11. Revelation, that's the last book in the Bible, right? A little trouble finding it. I was looking at First John. Revelation 11, verse number 7. Now this is the context about the, the two witnesses, and they're going to be killed and so forth. Revelation 11, verse 7, And they shall have finished their testimony, when they have finished their testimony, the beast, notice, that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war with them and shall overcome them and kill them. You see how he describes the Antichrist? He's the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit. Well, what's in the bottomless pit? Come to Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9. The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven upon the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. Verse 3, and there came out of the smoke locusts. And you, when you read the description, you say, whew, that's the funniest looking locust you ever saw. But they're not physical locusts, they're spirit creatures. They're, they're creatures in the spirit world. We call them demons. Verse number 11. And they had a king over them. Well, Proverbs 30 says that locusts don't have a king. So you know it's not the insect. It's a degenerated form of, of, of creatures in the spirit world. They have, the, they have a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Now that character, who's the head over all these creatures in the body, what I want you to see is there are, all, there, there are a bunch of fallen angels and, and demonic creatures, disembodied spirits, in the bottomless pit. They have a king over them. They're organized. This is part of Satan's, Satan's cohorts. These people were placed there at a particular time for a particular reason in a judgment of God. They put their, uh, in the judgment of the flood. And there you find them in Jude verse 6 and that kind of thing, and Second Peter chapter 2 verse 4 and those kind of things. And one of these creatures in that bottomless pit ascends out of that bottomless pit and enters into the body, that dead body of the man of sin. Now look at here. If a man dies and goes to hell, can he ever get out? No. So the man of sin doesn't die and his soul come back into his body. So what is it that's animating his, his body now? This spirit, satanic spirit, that ascends out of the bottomless pit. You've been watching movies for years about zombies. 